um, called density functional theory in order to predict um, in order to predict some of these these properties, uh, catalytic properties, or um, properties of the metal. So we can calculate binding energies um, using computers, uh, using a computational software. And um, <laughs> so this software that we use uh, in order to solve these chemical properties uh, solves this equation, which is a very, very complex equation. And when I calculate the properties, these nitrogen binding energies, uh, one calculation can take four computers working constantly uh, over 48 hours. Um, and only recently uh, have we been able to start using uh, computers like this in order to calculate properties of, of atoms or elements. Um, 60 years ago, or even even 20 years ago, computers were too slow in order to in order to do these calculations. Um, so, like 10 years ago, if you were to calculate one of these properties, it would have taken months for the computers to calculate it. And uh, um, every every couple of years, you can see the difference. Um, if I run a calculation now, or a calculation now that I ran two years ago, the computers are much faster, and it can even um, cut the time in half. Um, so computers are a very, very um, powerful tool right now in chemical engineering and in catalysis. Um, so we can use this computational program to simulate different metal surfaces. Um, so these are two metal surfaces, and these are now looking at bimetallic catalysts. So taking one metal and adding a second metal to the top or to the second layer and looking at the properties, the binding properties of these different metals. Uh, so over here are different binding energies um, of different metal configurations, adding platinum with other metals, so platinum with cobalt, platinum with nickel, plat platinum with iron. And on the volcano curve, you saw that we wanted um, a value of around 132. And looking at these values over here, you can see that um, uh, some of the values are very close to, the, to that peak of the volcano curve. So um, these, actually, so these three in particular uh, are in that optimal range. So the second part of the research that I do here at the University of Delaware is actually testing experimentally these different metal surfaces and the activity um, towards ammonia decomposition. Um, so, looking at catalysts, um, a lot of you probably haven't actually seen a catalyst, but a catalyst uh, kind of looks like a pile of dirt. <laughs> um, and what this is, is it's little tiny particles, little tiny particles of atom or of, uh, metal, of platinum, deposited on, um, deposited on something. Um, they're kind of, they're difficult to make. They, uh, actually, when, okay. when we zoom in, you can actually see the little medical, metal particles. There are the bright spots um, on the support. Uh, and uh, that support could be something like carbon, so like graphite. Uh, and it's hard to actually see what exactly is happening on the surface. And so in my research, um, we, I do surface science experiments where we take the metal um, that's deposited over there and just take a big chunk of it. And we look at um, how the, what the interactions on the surface and look at how the reactions are proceeding on the surface. <coughs> um, and there are many different chemistry instruments that have been developed over the last um, about 50 years in order to see exactly what's happening on the surface. So this is the type of instrument that I use, and this is called an ultra-high vacuum temperature. It has, or sorry, an ultra-high vacuum chamber. Uh, it has 
lots of pumps on it. Um, there are pumps down in this area, and it it decreases the pressure inside inside this area, and to a pressure that is about the same as the outer atmosphere. And we need these low pressures uh, for the instruments that we use to characterize the surface. And a lot of our instruments, um, actually I'll describe them on the next slide, but a lot of our instruments use electrons that we shoot at the surface. Um, we can isolate the electrons and then shoot them at the surface. And if electrons hit anything, um, they're going to be absorbed um, or reflected off of those atoms. And so we, make, we need to make sure that there's a clear path um, from the electrons to the surface, and then usually an electron is emitted from the surface and then sent back to the instrument. Um, but in our natural atmosphere, you know that um, in this room, this room is filled with oxygen molecules and nitrogen molecules. So if we were to shoot electrons through this room, the, those electrons would be um, absorbed uh, by the gas molecules in this room, and they wouldn't make it back to the instrument. So we need to remove all of the gas molecules in this room in order to do the, these experiments. <coughs> um, just a little bit about the experiments, because <laughs> I think they're pretty, they're pretty interesting. Uh, in this instrument, what we can do is we shoot electrons onto the surface and they, they are reflected back. And based off of how they interact with the surface, it can tell exactly what atoms are on, um, are on the surface, within the top 10 layers of the surface. So we can detect nickel atoms on the very top surface, or if they're platinum atoms, um, and the concentrations of them. So it's a really interesting technique. Um, we have metal sources where we can deposit individual atoms onto the surface. Uh, we have a sputter gun, which is um, basically we accelerate uh, atoms and it's basically like a, like a cannon and it shoots them onto the surface and knocks out other atoms um, and cleans the surface. And then we have a mass spectrometer so we can look at the masses of everything that comes off of the surface. Do you have a question? No, I'm just done. So for my experiments, we we take this this surface right here. This uh, it's called a crystal, a platinum crystal, and 